Hey folks, it's Jared Mananin from the website TahoeTrailGuide.com. Today we're going to be talking about performing hockey stops with cross-country skis. This has been a topic of inquiry this season, probably because people are making their way through my introduction to classic cross-country skiing series of videos. In the fourth one, I do some downhilling technique where I'm mostly emphasizing snowplow, but I'm also performing hockey stops in between takes. I don't go into explanation about the hockey stops in that particular video because again, it was mostly focused on basic snowplow technique. So today seems like a good day to follow up with that idea of performing a hockey stop. One of the reasons that I really like to perform hockey stops is because they're a more powerful stop than a snowplow, especially on steeper angle. When you're on a steep angle of terrain and you're trying to snowplow, you end up with a really wide, awkward body position and it's just not as powerful to have both your edges kind of facing in different directions. It's not as powerful as having both of your skis angled in the same direction, edged in the same direction. It's a, it's a really powerful stop, but it does take a little bit of finesse in order to get to that position. The nice thing about getting to that position, however, is it is, at least in my opinion, kind of a starting point for beginning to look at performing parallel turns or modified parallel turns, stem Christie, stem turns, wedge turns, whatever you want to call them. That position that you get into when you perform a hockey stop is the lead into those other downhilling techniques. So again, seems like a great idea to talk about this now. Before I get into the nitty gritty details about doing those hockey stops, I just want to point out that there's a thousand ways to reach the summit. There's not just one. What I do may be different from what other people do as far as doing hockey stops. And there's probably more technically oriented people that perform them much smoother than I do. But this is a lifelong process of learning and I'm going to show you what I do. It is effective for me. It works for me. I don't get injured. I'm able to stop. So what I do works for me and hopefully it will also work for you. But again, there's a lot of different ways of accomplishing the same task. So just try to keep an open mind. And if I miss something, I'll try to put it in the description below. There's always that. Read the descriptions on all of my videos because I always forget something and try to expand on, on that in the description of each video. Another thing that I want to point out is that it's much easier to perform a hockey stop when you're going at a pretty good speed and you're on firm terrain. Believe it or not, it's just a lot easier when you have a firm, uniform surface of snow such as you'd find at a groomed terrain. And I actually like performing it a lot better with, you know, classic track skis or skate skis, long skinny straight ones that got a stiff camber. I actually prefer to perform hockey stops in that environment more so than the back country because the terrain is often variable and the metal edges on skis, as much as you think they would help you, those things can also cut into the snow excessively if you don't get the right angle. So it can be kind of frustrating. Trying to do anything like a hockey stop on breakable crust is absolutely horrible. I don't advise it. Uh, stick with a snow plow if at all possible on that, but firm terrain is your best bet for practicing and you don't need to have all the terrain. You just need to have 20, 30, 40 feet, get a little bit of momentum, stop, and then just keep going back and forth or find a small little hill, a couple of degrees higher and practice on that just to get enough momentum because it's actually more challenging to come to a hockey stop when you're going very slow or you don't have any momentum at all. You need some speed in order to transfer your weight and angulate your body so that those skis run parallel and you can come to that complete stop. The two key elements that I really try to emphasize and try to embrace when I'm doing hockey stops and beyond hockey stops into downhill turns is the idea of weight transfer and angulation. So weight transfer, I need to move my skis in a way so that they're gonna become parallel when I'm performing a hockey stop, for example. You can't move your ski if you're standing on it. So the idea is that you're going to transfer your weight onto your downhill ski 
so that you can unweight the uphill ski and draw it parallel to that downhill ski. Just start simple and begin in a snowplow position and then weight your downhill ski and then as you're learning pick up your uphill ski and then bring it to the downhill ski parallel so it's edging the same way. Uphill edges are going to be engaged as you're performing your turn or your stop. It's fine to exaggerate that movement if you have to at the beginning. It'll smooth out eventually later as you realize how much weight you have to transfer and how quickly you can move that uphill ski into that parallel position. Another piece with that weight transfer is angulation. And that's essentially the body position that you want to embrace or hold while you're performing this. And if you've done any kind of alpine skiing or telemark skiing, essentially we we'll want to have our upper body be facing downhill. Our lower body is going to be doing the turning, but our upper body for the most part should be facing downhill. Even if you're just trying to perform a hockey stop on the flats, imagine that the direction in which you're traveling is actually downhill. Since your momentum is taking you that way, just treat it as that's the downhill direction. So try to keep your upper body faced in that direction and rotate your lower body to get the correct edge angle of your skis so that they're running parallel and enable you to come to a complete stop. It feels like an awkward body position when you first start to do it but you need to get comfortable with it and you will once you realize how effective it is at allowing you to keep those edges engaged on the snow you don't have to worry about skidding out and flying out off the rails or anything like that once you get that right angulation and essentially it's kind of a drop in the shoulder your center of mass or your hips comes out to the side and then that kind of draws you into this position where both your skis now are angling in the same direction and it's a powerful position and you just have to remember that when you start doing your downhill turns that you're rotating the lower body but keeping that upper body face downhill again it's an awkward feeling at first but as you develop that muscle memory you're gonna feel oh this is why it works so well In all of these examples, I'm using my cross-country ski poles as a visual and physical reminder to initiate my turn, or rather, the hockey stop. I'm not using them to actually stop myself. And if you notice, it's a real light stab into the snow, and then I release. The physical cue also involves keeping my upper body facing in the direction of travel, if I'm not using cross-country ski poles, it's much easier for me to forget what I'm doing with my hands and allowing my whole upper body to turn and torque in a non-beneficial way, which could result in me just falling over or losing that ideal angulation. As I stab the snow with a pole, I keep my hand extended forward. And this makes sure that when my lower body is rotated perpendicular to the direction of travel, that my upper body remains in the direction of travel. It's really obvious when viewing my skis and my feet from this point of view that I initiate my hockey stops or even my modified parallel turns from a snowplow position. It's far more subtle than a traditional snowplow, but it's still a snowplow. It puts me in a position of safety so that when I edge my downhill ski or the ski that's leading in the direction of travel, I have that base of support in that snowplow position. I admit that a more exceptional skier will be able to angle both of their skis in the same direction for their hockey stop or their alpine turn. I don't quite have the confidence yet to do that. Hopefully all these examples are sufficient to kind of burn into your memory this position that you want to achieve when performing a hockey stop. It takes a lot of practice, but once you get it, like, oh, that's it. 
Okay, now I got it. Now it's not an issue. Uh, the problem is if you don't put the time in and you just think that you're gonna pull it off on your first try It's not gonna work. You know, you need to put the practice in you need to put the time in skis time on skis time on snow in in order to Get that muscle memory and then once you feel comfortable doing that hockey stop not on just one side But on both sides then you can start really looking into doing some downhill turns with those skis you can take that hockey stop and essentially perform skidded turns all the way down the hill linking those turns so it's very fun it's a it, it really opens up more terrain for you it helps you develop your confidence going down steep stuff that may have been terrifying to you before and it just allows you to be safer and just have a great time so i highly recommend just finding small little angles of terrain or flat surfaces that you can get enough momentum, maybe double pulling first, and then just coming to a stop and then go back and forth, back and forth. Just keep doing it and you'll get it. Matter of practice, like most things in life. Well, that's about all I have. Ask any questions, give me any tips on ways in which that I can perform it more smoothly down in the comment section below. If you liked the video, Give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check out TahoeTrailGuide.com. And if you feel compelled to contribute in a financial way to the health and longevity of this YouTube channel as well as TahoeTrailGuide.com, I have a Patreon and PayPal account, both of which you can contribute. Patreon is a monthly donation. PayPal is a one-time donation, or I should say tip. I don't take donations. Anyway. If you want to, that's available. I appreciate all of you guys tuning in. I love all the comments, answering all the questions. I really wanna give a shout out to all my Patreon subscribers, my patrons. They enable me to do what I do. And for that, I am eternally grateful. Take care, everyone.